In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, by whom we are redeemed and receive adoption, look graciously upon your beloved sons and daughters, that those who believe in Christ may receive true freedom and an everlasting inheritance. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord, You, son of man, I have appointed watchmen for the house of Israel. When you hear me say anything, you shall warn them for me. If I tell the wicked, O wicked one, you shall surely die, and you do not speak out to dissuade the wicked from his way, the wicked shall die for his guilt, but I will hold you responsible for his death. But if you warn the wicked, trying to turn him from his way, and he refuses to turn from his way, he shall die for his guilt, but you shall save yourself. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, owe nothing to anyone except to love one another. For the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not kill, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other commandment there may be, are summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no evil to the neighbor, hence, love is the fulfillment of the law. <coughs> the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, if your brother sins against you, go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you, so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. So I got to tell you what happened last night when I was preaching at the 515. If you remember, a tremendous storm came through around 6 o'clock, 545. If you're around this area, you know it came through. And and so I happened to be preaching right at that time. So there was lightning, there was wind, there was all these other things, and this air thing kept going back and forth in whoosh of air. I kept saying it was the Holy Spirit. <laughs> and um, afterwards, as I was greeting uh, the parishioners, one parishioner came up to me and said, you know, Deacon, I've got to ask you a question about your homily. I said, sure, what was the question about your homily? How did you add so many special effects in that? <laughs> Father Don is always saying that it's a sight and sound experience. And I said, well, when we put the HVAC in, we added a few buttons at the AMBO, and I can just push them, uh, and we get lightning. Joy. Joy. It's a joy to be here with you this morning. It's a joy to proclaim this good news to you. You know, when two or three are gathered in his name, he's with us. So we have that covered just with our beautiful choir here. Jesus is with us, and we have to stop for a moment and remember that. So just open your mind and your hearts and your soul to hopefully listen to what Jesus wants to tell us this morning. 
I think there are three main points in today's readings and gospel. The first is love your neighbor as yourself. And we hear that from Paul Romans. Most of us have heard that before. Love your neighbor as yourself. And Paul says that this is the summary of all the commandments. Well, he's actually speaking about the last seven commandments. You know, the first three commandments are about loving God. The last seven commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not covet. Those are really about love of neighbor. So that's why he's saying with these commandments, the summary of these commandments is just love your neighbor as yourself. But one thing I thought about when you hear that line, love your neighbor as yourself, there's a big assumption in there when Paul says that. There's something he assumes. And the thing he assumes is that we love ourselves. Because it doesn't make any sense, does it? If you're going to love your neighbor as yourself, if you don't already love yourself, then that statement makes no sense whatsoever. And I really ask, do you love yourself? In 2023, here in this world, right where you are right now, do you love yourself? Now, I'm not talking about some type of self-centered love. That's not what I'm talking about. Why should we love ourselves? We should love ourselves because God created us. We didn't create ourselves. God created each and every one of us. There has never been another you ever in the history of this world. And there will never be another you in all the time of this world. You're that special. You're that special to God. God knew you before you were knit in your mother's womb. God knows every hair on your head. Now, for some of us, it's getting easier for God to know us. <laughs> Father Don, not a problem. <laughs> oh, I forgot. This is being live streamed. <laughs> he knows every hair on our heads. You're that special, and he's created you for a reason and a purpose. So we have to remember that when we talk about love our neighbor of ourselves, we have to love ourselves first and recognize that we're a child of God, created special in God's image. And then with that understanding, then we can go out and love our neighbor as ourselves because they're children of God too. The second point of today's readings in gospel, I think, is relativism. R-E-L-A-T-I-V-I-S-M. And I know what you're thinking. Oh my gosh. Good grief. If he's going to use that as his acronym, we're going to be here a while. <laughs> we might need a Snickers. No acronym, but a definition. What is relativism? Relativism is when I can decide what is the truth for myself. And you can decide what the truth is for yourself. And your truth can be different than my truth. And as long as your truth doesn't really bother my truth, I guess I'm okay with it, even though I know it's not the truth. Relativism is alive and well in our society and in our culture. That's what's going on. You want to know why we have so many problems? Relativism is the root of a lot of it. And what's the root of all sin? Pride. I can decide. I can decide what the truth is. And for Christians, relativism, first of all, when you look at history, if you, anybody likes history, if you go back and look at history, some of the great atrocities against the human race throughout all of history, relativism was the, one of the main, main features of that culture. What did Pilate say to Jesus about truth? What is truth? In the Roman culture, for example, Pilate didn't know what truth was. Truth was what anybody said truth was. For Christians, for disciples of Christ, that no work. That doesn't work for us. And why do I say that? Because Jesus is the absolute truth. There is absolute truth. It's not for, up, for one of us to decide and another person to decide what truth is. There is absolute truth in this world. And that's what Jesus is trying to convey in the gospel today. So Jesus is setting up his church, the church he's going to be the head of, our church. And what he's saying to his disciples is what you find bound on this earth will be bound in heaven. What you find loosed on this earth shall be loosed in heaven. What he is saying is Jesus is saying that I am the truth, the way, the life. He's the only one that said that in this world. And he's saying, through my church, I'm going to express myself through its teachings. 
I'm going to express the truth through the teachings of the church. So sometimes I'll hear somebody say, well, I don't really like that about what the Catholic Church teaches, or I'm not sure if I really believe that. And I always just say, be very careful. Because it sounds a little prideful, and we have to be very careful of pride. Because the fact of the matter is, Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. And we have to approach our faith with humility and docility. I don't think we as Americans like the word docility, docile. What is docile? Often, oftentimes when you hear the word docile, you hear that associated with sheep. Sheep are docile. Okay? But then again, who is the true shepherd? We're supposed to follow like sheep. So we have to remember when we approach our faith, we have to approach it with humility and docility. The third point, forgiveness. This gospel this afternoon, uh, this, this morning, is all about forgiveness. Okay, so what Jesus is saying to his disciples, this is the way you're supposed to treat someone else who's doing something wrong. First of all, you have a duty. We have a duty to point out when something is wrong. And you take that person aside and you say, okay, uh, Bob. Oh my gosh, are there Bobs here? I didn't mean that. that I, should use. I could use any name. It could be your name. It could be my name, okay? You're, you're screwing up. And you're supposed to do that privately and explain why. If that doesn't work, then you take two or three of your friends, okay, kind of, you know, team up on them and say, hey, listen, uh, this is why you're not doing this right. This is why you need to think about this differently. You're off the path. And if that doesn't work, where do you go? You go to the church. Why? Because the church is God's expression of the truth. After that, what do we do? Treat them like a tax collector or a Gentile. Now, how many people heard that and said, okay, I get it. Just like baseball, three strikes, you're out. <laughs> We're going to treat them like a tax collector or a Gentile. How many people actually hear that and say, okay, I get it. After you try three times, we leave them alone. Is that what you thought? Oh, well, maybe you're smarter than me. I couldn't tell. <laughs> well, that's missing the whole point, and I'll tell you why. Because the preceding passage to this one in Matthew's gospel is about the hundred sheep. Remember, the shepherd has the 99 sheep. He lets them alone and goes after the one lost sheep. The true shepherd is always going after the one lost sheep. That's what's immediately before this gospel. Okay? So when, when we hear, treat him like a tax collector or Gentile, Matthew's writing this gospel. What was Matthew? What was his job? A tax collector. He was chosen as a disciple of Christ. Christ didn't give up on tax collectors. Christ sat down with tax collectors and ate with them and was mocked by his others because he did that. And Gentiles, what's the last thing that Jesus said before he ascended into heaven? Go forth, teach all nations in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. All nations. Jesus said, I'm here for everybody, and this church is here for everybody too. So when you hear that tax collectors and treat them as tax collectors, the point is never give up, never abandon. Jesus never abandons us, and he's asking us never to abandon anyone else, even if they're doing something wrong. It's about forgiveness. So may we, as we go about our day today and celebrate this sacred mass together, let's think about loving our neighbor as ourselves, but starting with that we have to love ourselves first and recognize because we're a child of God. And may we also think about this concept of relativism, big word, but has it crept into your mind or in your thinking? And what can we do about that? And then finally, can we remember that God is a loving and forgiving God, never abandons us? And why is it important that we treat others if we can't get them to back on the path, we treat them like a tax collector and Gentile because we're often the tax collector and Gentile. We're the ones that have been off the path and we're the ones that haven't listened to everybody else or we won't listen to the church. So we have to keep trying. So let me end this um, homily where I started. Joy. It's a short acronym. Let the joy of the gospel overwhelm you. Let Jesus overwhelm you. Let Jesus overcome you. 
Jesus is the absolute truth, yesterday, today, and forever. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified in the Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Trusting that God will grant the prayers of two or more who are united in his name, we bring our needs and the needs of the world to him. For the church, that we may be a model to the world of reconciling our differences, making an example of how to respond to one another with love and mercy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in positions of authority, that they may treat those who may have done something wrong or suspicious with dignity and consideration, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those whose lives were forever changed by the terrorist att attacks of 9-11, and for a renewed resolve to work toward peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Harrison Grassi, who is being baptized this weekend, may he become a new creation in the holy waters of baptism, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all EMTs, police, all first responders, and military men and women, who run towards danger to protect and for their families who take care of them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the special prayers we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, especially for Antonio and Gladys Balchia, who we remember in prayer at this holy mass, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty, ever-living God, look with favor upon the prayers of your holy people, that what we ask for in faith, you may grant us in your mercy, through Christ our Lord. Amen. There is a second collection today for Peter's Pence. This is to help fund the Pope's charitable efforts. Please be generous.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who give us the gift of true prayer and of peace, graciously grant that through this offering we may do fitting homage to your divine majesty, and by partaking of the sacred mystery, we may be faithfully united in mind and heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Patrick and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Timothy, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter into my life.
Father and I were just having a big theological discussion. Who was going to do the announcements? <laughs> uh, solemn Vesters with Exposition and Benediction of the Most Blessed Sacrament will be celebrated this Thursday at 7 p.m. in the Shrine Church. If you've never been to Solemn Vester, Vespers, they're essentially the Liturgy of the Hours that we pray. Um, the priests pray them throughout the day, the deacons pray them, and many of the faithful pray the Liturgy of the Hours, and that's what Solemn Vespers is, but it also includes... Uh, exposition and benediction. It's very, very uh, powerful. Join us in the PAC gymnasium for family movie night on Saturday, September 16th at 6.30 p.m. Cub Scout PAC 168 is kicking off their scout year boys in first through fifth grade. PAC leaders will be available at the donut social after mass. Are we having a donut social? Okay, thumbs up. Okay. We are having a donut social after mass to answer questions and register any scouts and parents interested in scouting. The St. Vincent de Paul Society will be collecting men's and women's new winter coats, hats, gloves, and socks for the Veterans Stability Initiative Program before all masses next weekend of September 16th and 17th. That's new winter coats, hats, gloves, and socks for the veterans. Our, all high school teens and their families are invited to join us this Sunday for our youth group end of the summer barbecue event in the PAC parking lot at 5.30 p.m. Food, drinks, and games will be provided. And please visit the parish website, bulletin, or flyer in the North X for more information on the events and activities of our parish. Thank you. Let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, whom you nourish and endow with life through the food of your word and heavenly sacrament, may so benefit from your beloved son's great gifts that we may merit an eternal share in his life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Say, Michael, the Archangel, defend us now. Be our protection against